Good morning, church, and welcome to uh, the new way of doing Jubilee Church. It's a bit different. It's a bit interesting. We've had a great time so far preparing and recording a video for you this morning. My name is Tim Cowles, and I'm one of the leaders here at Jubilee Church, and we've got a message to encourage you today. Um, And we also know that it's Mother's Sunday, so let's celebrate our mothers, uh, whether they're spiritual mothers or whether they're your your own mother. How about you give them a call this morning, this afternoon, and just touch base with them, see how they're doing. But we also recognise that this is actually quite a difficult time for some people, so we would want to say our prayers and our thoughts are with you at this time. We're just going to be providing a few different updates with these videos over the next couple of weeks as we see how things develop. Uh, And one of the ones that we want to bring this morning is an update about how you can get involved and help during this time. We're currently working in partnership with Friends of Shepparton and Mary Magdalene Church. And there are different ways that you can get involved to help. And but first, I guess we just say, actually, if you're someone who you think you can help uh, right now to... Uh, give us a call. So there's, um, if you're living in either Shepton Green or Charlton Village, we're directing you to get in touch with Mary Magdalene Church. And their number is 01932 562249. And if you live in Old Shepparton or in the High Street area or anywhere else and you want to help, we're asking you to get in touch with us on 01932 228882. Any help that you can offer or any donations that you might be able to to support with will be so gratefully appreciated. Now, we also want to, because we're a church and we're family, we want to support our children. And so children, we've got an activity for you. Hopefully you've received it, but this is our activity sheet for you. This is what we're asking you to do this week. And this is all about being part of the the body of Christ um, and being part of the church. There's a guy called Paul in the Bible who wrote to so many different churches um, and encouraged them with letters about the Christian living. And one letter he wrote to a church in Corinth called, uh, well, called Corinth, and it's in Greece now. And he encouraged them by saying that although we're all um, individuals, we all bring our gifts and our talents to the overall church for the benefit of the church and for the benefit of God. So right now, we're going to ask you to, to cut out all of these body parts and to put them together. If you follow the, the instructions on the sheet, then color it in. And we would love to see a photo of what you've produced. Here's one that I made earlier. It's a, I've, I've done a little NHS person. As you can see, they've got their face mask on and they've got their uh, stethoscope. And we just want to give a big shout out to our NHS workers, those working in education right now, and all the other key workers who are helping to support this country move forward at this time of crisis. So we want to say thank you to you. Um, and we also want to say a big thank you uh, to the team that have been supporting producing this whole thing. Each uh, Over the week we've been sort of planning what can we do on Sunday morning um, for you to encourage you uh, so that we can still do church together and they've been working so hard to help us and what our plans have been as they've been changing with government advice. So right now we're doing pre-recorded videos um, that hopefully you can be watching at home or wherever you are. Um, So stay tuned for more videos that'll come and more updates that'll come out from us as a church. But if you've got any questions, or particularly if you're watching this and you think, actually, I really like that children's activity. Can I get some activities sent to me? Why don't you get in touch with us on info at jubileechurchshepparton.org and we would love uh, love to hear from you and to get in touch. What we're going to do now is we're going to have a message from Dave Webpepler, who's our leader here. So he's going to... um, the video is going to come straight after me. So church, uh, stay encouraged, uh, stay reading your Bibles, praying at this time, and let's carry on supporting those in our community. Uh, God bless you. Okay, hi um, Jubilee Church, uh, and welcome to our first online um, sermon uh, that we are doing. Uh, We're really sorry, but we've had to um, postpone our series on Holy Spirit person, presence, power, uh, just because uh, we have decided that it would be a good idea to do something different. So we are going to um, 
move into a new series uh, entitled Drawing Closer to God. Uh, and uh, that's going to be our new series. Uh, and uh, it's going to consist of looking at a number of Psalms in the Old Testament uh, and using them as a guide to draw closer to God. And uh, I have uh, been uh, allotted with the first talk. Uh, and uh, so I'm going to look at um, Psalm 19 if that's okay. Uh, psalm 19 is a tremendous psalm. I've been reading through the psalms over this year uh, and uh, really enjoyed uh, preaching on Psalm 1. Uh, and uh, I've looked through various other psalms, gradually worked my way through and uh, alighted on Psalm 19. Uh, and I think Psalm 19 is a perfect psalm for the season in which we live. Uh, and so I've got three things that I want to look at from Psalm 19, but I'm not gonna be able to manage them all uh, today. Uh, because uh, I felt that I didn't have the time. So um, the three things to get out of Psalm 19 are, uh, and I'm entitled to the talk, three things to do whilst self-isolating, according to Psalm 19. Three things to do whilst self-isolating, or whilst in lockdown, or whilst on sabbatical, or whatever way you want to choose to describe um, your situation right now. Uh, and those three things are, firstly, uh, enjoying God's creation, verses 1 to 6. Secondly, enjoying God's word, verses 7 to 11. And finally, engaging in self-reflection, verses 12 to 14. So can I encourage you just to get your Bibles out uh, and uh, have a read through the psalm? Uh, you'll be able to do that in the comfort of your own home, in your lounge or living room or kitchen. Uh, and just gently read through the psalm. And um, what I'm going to be looking at is just those first six verses of Psalm 19. So the first six verses of Psalm 19 say this, the works and word of God. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they reveal knowledge. They have no speech. They use no words and no sound is heard from them. And yet their voice goes out into all the earth, their words to the end of the world. In the heavens, God has pitched a tent for the sun. It is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber or like a champion rejoicing to run his course. It rises at one end of the heavens and makes its circuit to the other. Nothing is deprived of its warmth. And so David, who wrote the psalm, uh, is talking about creation and he's talking about the beauty of creation. He's talking about the magnificence of the sky. Uh, he's principally focused on the sky. I think because everyone gets access to see the sky, not everyone gets sort of beautiful rural settings, but we all get to see the sky and we all get to see the sky in all of its magnificence. And I think it'd be true to say that David had first-hand experience of beautiful settings. Uh, we know that in his youth, he was a shepherd, a shepherd boy, and he would have spent a lot of time facing the elements. So he would have um, led his sheep up into green pastures through storms. He would have presumably been looking for water sources uh, uh, for his sheep uh, in, in streams and pools. Uh, and uh, Psalm 23, of course, describes that scenario. Uh, and uh, finally, he probably would have been sitting out in chilly nights uh, with the beautiful night sky and the stars, uh, looking at the stars and looking at the canvas that was on display before him while he protected the um, sheep from roving lions. And so David was, was very familiar uh, with this whole idea of the glory of God's creation. And so what he does is he describes creation as a palette and almost a, a work of art that God is involved in painting. Uh, and so what he says is that the whole of creation is God's work of art, more or less, uh, and that, that, that God is the artist. So if you look at the first couple of verses, it says this, the heavens declare the glory of God. The sky proclaims the work of his hands. So the work of his hands talks about the artist painting the painting or the potter forming the pot. You get the link between um, uh, uh, the picture and the artist. And so David is, is, is automatically saying that whatever creation we see around us has an artist, namely God, behind it. And, and as you look at the painting, 
you get a understanding of the artist. Now, when I was young, I used to enjoy paintings and going to museums and whatever, and sadly, I've not been able to do that so recently, which is a shame, really. But uh, I used to enjoy impressionist paintings. And so if you go and have a look at a Monet, for example, um, at um, the National Gallery or wherever you might want to see a Monet or in Paris, uh, less chance of you doing that nowadays, uh, but perhaps in the future you might get a chance to do that. If you get to see uh, Monet, uh, you will recognise that, that, that the artist Monet was into water lilies uh, and he was into light and he was into colour and how the two interacted. He was into uh, impressionism as a form of painting, so light brush strokes, uh, not the actual sort of object, but an impression of the object. And so you get an understanding of Monet from his water lilies. Or you might get an understanding of Van Gogh from his sunflowers, and you might see his slight manic nature as he paints those. Or um, there are loads of examples, aren't there, of an understanding of the artist from the painting. Uh, and what David is saying is that as we look at creation and as we look at the magnificence of creation, we get an understanding of the artist, namely God and we get an appreciation of who God is and his personality. And um, this is really important. So he gives an example, doesn't he? And he talks about um, sunrise and sunset, and he talks about the journey of the sun through the sky, and he says, from this, we can get an understanding of who God is. And as we read this description, I'll quickly read it through again, because it's quite interesting. As we read this description, we can form an understanding of the character of God. So David writes, in the heavens, God has pitched a tent for the sun. It is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, like a champion rejoicing to run his course. It rises at one end of the heavens, makes its circuit to the other, and nothing is deprived of its warmth. And so what can we learn from God from those few verses? Well, we can learn that he's consistent, that he, every day, he, 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 he provides the sunshine. We can learn that he's creative. We learn that no one sunset is the same. They're all different. Uh, and every single sunset that you or I look like, look at, uh, at any one time is going to be entirely different to any other sunset. Or he's in love with his creation. He talks about the bridegroom and this, this idea of love. He's in love with his creation. Or he's on an adventure with his creation. The hero charging forth on the, on the race. He's immensely powerful. Uh, linked to the sun. He's a god of purpose with a clear goal in mind. He's a god of cycles. There's day and night. There's rest. There's activity. Uh, he's the giver of life and warmth. Uh, and all of this we learn from one painting. We learn from looking out of a window and looking at one sunset. We can learn so much about the character of God from looking at creation. And so I reflected on that and I thought there's a danger that we in the modern world have become detached from our creation and therefore from the creator. And so the more time we spend with laptops or with iPhones or with TV screens or with uh, mechanical light, artificial light, counterfeit light you could even call it, the less time we are spending with God's creation and life-giving light. And, and, and my feeling is that during this time of um, isolation and less activity, I think this is an opportunity for us to potentially reconnect with God's creation. Uh, I think this is a great opportunity to do so. Uh, and so um, we are still allowed to go outside and walk the proverbial dog. Uh, according to uh, government instruction. I think we can still do that. Some may have a dog and some may not. I sadly do. Uh, and um, I have to walk the dog <laughs> on a regular occasion. But actually, that's a real benefit uh, because it gets a chance for me to spend time in touch with God's creation. And so during this season, what I would just encourage us to do is take time out to look at creation and appreciate the creator. Now, for those of us who are reasonably mobile, that may involve a walk down the river. 
Uh, in fact, Tim told me today that he had a little stroll down the Way Navigation Canal, which I highly recommend, uh, very pretty, or a walk down the Thames, or if you can go a bit further, try the Surrey Hills. Plenty of beautiful places around us where we can walk and get a, a, an understanding of God's creation. But if you're less mobile, I, I think there's equal opportunity to appreciate God's creation. I think just looking out uh, into the garden or looking uh, at the sunset this evening, for example, or spending time um, getting a few flowers and potting them up or feeding the birds or just doing some of those simple activities that get you in touch with creation is a valuable idea. And I was also thinking, and how, what could we then do? I was thinking, perhaps, as you go through the day, you may want to frame the moment, and you may want to take a particular scene, a beautiful sunset or something, and just almost frame it with your, with your fingers, and, and, and look at the frame and think, wow, what does this tell me about God? What does this particular snapshot um, tell me about our magnificent God? Uh, let me encourage you to do that. Let me also encourage you to think about taking a photo and possibly um, posting it on the um, uh, church family Facebook site uh, with a, a little caption underneath in terms of uh, your impression of God. Uh, and uh, I'd love to see lots of photos uh, from different people of sunsets, of gardens, of trees, of wildlife. Uh, we could even have a little competition to see who can produce the best photo and best caption. Uh, uh, and uh, let's do that together. And then various ones of us can comment uh, on each other's insights into God's magnificent creation. In fact, I seem to remember that on one particular WhatsApp um, um, group, uh, that sort of exercise has already been done uh, today uh, in terms of flowers and pictures of flowers and whatever. So uh, I think that'd be an excellent um, exercise. And so um, I just want to say that, that personally, and we're not all the same, I get that, but I think personally, when I have spent a day in God's creation, I remember um, several months ago when we had the privilege of going to um, Crete on a holiday and we went on a ravine walk, uh, and it was just gorgeous. And we were um, uh, climbing down this ravine with a stream and, and going from rock to rock and then having lunch by the stream and then clambering up more rocks. Uh, and then there was a really steep walk where we were walking along quite a steep path which had dropped down into the ravine. And uh, I think Ruthie was quite scared at that point, which um, was um, mildly entertaining for me uh, and, uh, and the rest of us. And then at the end of the day, dropping down to the beach uh, uh, where the gorge came into the sea and we managed to drop down and find the beach 10 minutes before sunset and then have the beautiful sunset with all its rich um, colours and, and then have a little dip in the sea uh, and then finally sort of it going dark and us, us leaving it was just a magnificent day. There's a Lou Reed song, isn't there? Perfect day. And we often have days like that, don't we, where we have sort of perfect days. And can I suggest that those perfect days don't come by accident um, they are orchestrated by God, that he arranges for us these perfect days where we appreciate his creation, where we enjoy these moments, where, as I said, the coming down to the beach at the end of the day coincides with a beautiful sunset and coincides with, with all sorts of, of things, and that God orchestrates that for us. And that actually, even though we were really tired at the end of that day, spiritually, we were recharged and we were revitalized and we were replenished and we were ready for action once more. And so what I really want to encourage us to think about during this time of quietness, I think, I think this time is a God opportunity for us to engage in replenishing activities. Uh, and uh, I may get a chance to continue to explore Psalm 19 and look at God's word and how uh, 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 God's word can also replenish us. But I'm starting with the first six verses, which talk about creation and the replenishing value of creation. So let me encourage you in that. Let me say, uh, uh, please take every opportunity uh, to allow God to speak to you through his magnificent creation. And uh, God bless you and uh, look forward to seeing you again as we continue to experiment uh, with um, Jubilee Virtual Church together.
Uh, I'm going to pray just briefly. Dear Lord, I thank you for an opportunity to just briefly read your word. Uh, and I pray that as we appreciate your magnificent creation, you may speak to us through your Holy Spirit and you may replenish us through that process. In Jesus' precious name, amen. <laughs>